Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former CMP examiner. Today, I want to come on and discuss a condition that lots of veterans suffer from called patellofemoral pain syndrome, also referenced as PFPS. So many of you guys may have seen that in your medical records or been told that you have it, um, among other things. But the what is this condition? It's like a super common condition in U.S. Army veterans and active duty service members um, that are experiencing anterior knee pain, right? So knee pain in the front of the knee. I have my handy um, knee model here today that I'm going to try to use and kind of go over some of the different points of the knee with you guys. I've, I've done a video or two on this before. So just a quick overview of the anatomy, okay? This is your patellar tendon in the front, Okay. Um, this, this goes up to your quadriceps muscle up in the top. We don't have the quadriceps muscle in this image, right? But we have the, um, uh, patellar tendon that goes all the way down here. This is, um, goes over your patella, right? That's your patella bone. And this is your femur bone or your thigh bone up here at the top. And these are your tibia and your fibula, right? Your, your two lower leg bones. Okay. So there are a bunch of other things that articulate here. And again, I'm not going to belabor all of these, you know, points here, but we have the meniscus that's in the inside. Um, we'll do a separate video on the meniscus later. You have your ACL and your PCL here in the middle. And then you have your LCL and your MCL, these different ligaments. Um, I have a really long video. If you guys go back some time, it's, it's probably like a 45 minute to an hour video that really details the entire knee. Um, if you're interested in just a whole knee video, but I really want to just go over PFPS today. Okay, so what is PFPS? So PFPS um, is the condition of anterior knee pain, and I'm gonna I'm gonna discuss what the Cleveland Clinic says here, so you guys can take a look over that as well. So it's just an overuse injury of the knee joint. Um, there can be some differences in kneecap alignments, right? So if you have your quadriceps muscle is super strong, we can have something called patellar maltracking that can develop into another thing. Again, I don't want to word vomit a bunch of big words on you. Um, you can develop chondromalacia and arthritis, things like that later on from other, you know, maltracking issues. But basically PFPS is due to overuse, maybe some improper equipment use that is putting some extra strain on that knee as well. Um, you can develop pain during activities, weight-bearing activities, walking, running, squatting, climbing stairs, etc. cetera. Um, generally speaking, you're probably not going to have a lot of abnormalities with PFPS on imaging. Um, you know, if you have some of those other things, maybe you have chondromalacia, arthritis, things like that. So it's a pretty common overuse anterior knee pain problem. So people are going to say that they've got pain in the front of their knee. Again, that doesn't mean that you've got um, PFPS, you could have other things, right? So this is by no means medical advice. This is by no means medical advice. This is also not legal advice. Let me throw that out there. I'm not an accredited claims agent or a VSO or an attorney. I'm just a person that used to be a, a CMP examiner. I've been in the medical field for a while. So I like to give informational videos like this. Um, but again, it, there are a million different things that could be wrong with your knee. So don't self-diagnose, you know, make sure you follow up with your healthcare provider if you're having any issues, et cetera. Um, so how do people get service connected for PFPS or that anterior knee pain? Again, there are other things that can cause anterior knee pain like patellar tendonitis or, you know, a, mil a bajillion things, right? So you can get connected for knee pain um, either by direct service connection or secondary service connection. Those are, you know, pretty much the, the ways that you would get service connected for a condition. So if you injured your knee on active duty or you had developed PFPS on active duty and you were diagnosed with it, um, and your records reflect that, that could be that. If you have um, some buddy statements and your current diagnosis, let's say you got out two years ago and your current condition is PFPS and you've got a really solid buddy statement that says, you know, I experienced this, you know, while I was an infantryman, you know, veteran Snuffy, my buddy, he wrote me a buddy letter. I didn't like to go to the doctors, et cetera, because of, you know, there's a million reasons why we say it, right? Most common thing we hear is that people don't want to go to sick call because they get ragged on or, or whatever the, the issue was, why you didn't get seen. If you've got some good supporting statements, that may be helpful in your case. It may not. I don't know. Um, but direct service connection is if you can show that it existed or, or started in service or because of some kind of in-service incident or event, right? And then from a secondary service connection standpoint, if another condition... Um, caused or worsened or aggravated that that 
let's say it's your right knee, okay? Let's say you've developed PSPS, post-service, um, and, and it was caused or worsened by another service-connected condition, right? Let's say you have your left knee is service-connected. Let's say you developed left knee arthritis while you were in service, you were in for 15 years, um, and then you have an altered gait, right? You're limping around, you have all these issues, or you're, you're bearing more weight on the right side. Or let's say it's your hip, and it's causing you to have an altered gait to that other side. Um, sometimes you can get uh, service-connected because you're whatever that primary condition is caused or worsened that new condition, right? Or that other condition. So that pretty much is the gist of that. Um, as far as ratings are concerned, I don't get into ratings a ton, you know, and ratings are always subject to change. So again, the most important things for you to show um, are that you have a, a condition currently. They can uh, diagnose you at the CMP exam if they so choose. That doesn't always happen, but they may say, oh, yes, this is what we believe it is, um, that you have an in-service event or injury or illness or some other issue um, that's already service-connected drawing that nexus or that link, right? Okay, so we talked about primary and secondary service connect connection. Um, you can be rated for this. Again, this can be subject to change. Ratings are always subject to change. You can be rated for limitation of, ex of extension, limitation um, or instability of the knee. You can you can even be rated for a total knee replacement, right? If you know that's a te generally temporary, you get a total knee replacement 100%, and then it will be rated. Um, you know, after that, it will change, right? But again, with the ratings, you want to follow up with a VSO or a legal professional who can go over some of those things. In general, if you have full range of motion, but you have pain in motion, you're you're probably not always, but if you have pain in motion, you're generally probably going to at least get 10%. But again, it just depends on um, your evaluation and the specifics of your case. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Um, go ahead and head back. Uh, we'll do another video too on um, what happens for a knee CMP examination. That might be helpful. We go over that DBQ. Um, and maybe check out my one hour video that we did way back in the day on the knee. And that, that may be helpful to you guys as well. So thanks for watching. Drop some comments and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to hear about. See ya.